I've had the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 for right a little bit over a month, right? I just did an honest review on this a couple weeks back on this channel here, and I did a couple videos on my main channel as well, but I've come to love the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6, and I want to tell you why in this video. Now, this is going to be my personal subjective experience. I tried to give you a little bit more of a fair objective review in my honest review, but in this one, I'm just going to go to town and just give you all my personal opinions on this as a user of this phone. Now, I didn't pay the full price. Let's just keep that very clear right here and very transparent. What I did was I traded in my Z Fold 5. Um, so that one got me a massive discount. I was able to get this for a little under $800 all said and done. So I got it for cheaper than some iPhone Max models, for example. And for what this does, it feels like a pretty good deal. You can see I did go with the exclusive white color from Samsung.com. And you'll see right here that this is the newer Z Fold 6 with the squared body. You'll see the new camera lenses right there. And it has nice silver edges right here. So the first reason that I actually really, really have come to love the Z Fold 6 is the improvements to the cover display. While they did the, make the body more square, they also made the screen a little bit bigger. And this little bit bigger makes a big difference for the usability factor of the Galaxy Z Fold. The Z Fold has always been one of the more narrow screens, and to this day, it still is one of the more narrow smartphone screens out there. But it's gotten to the point where now I can at least type pretty easily on here. So if I'm looking for something, it's not too hard. It is still a little bit, you know, a little bit more narrow than I would like. But overall, it's more usable than ever. And it makes this phone more of a daily driver usable phone uh, to me. This actually has become my daily driver Android phone. Like I, like I like this more than any Android phone that I've used this year so far, honestly, for what it can do for me in a productivity sense. But the cover display has been pretty good. And I understand that some people think that it should be larger, including myself, I, um, but some people really like this more portable feel. And I think it's one of the easiest to one hand phones available right now, especially on the cover display. I mean, look at this. Because of its more narrow form factor, this is kind of like having a portable phone on the front. And then if you want the bigger screen, just open up to the inside and you get your bigger, larger smartphone. So I would say it's pretty practical, even if it's not your favorite large cover display of some of the competitors out there. So my second reason is the S Pen. Now you'll wanna get the S Pen Slim case, I think it's called that. Uh, you, you get this S Pen in here if you buy this case, and this case is not cheap, it's like a 100 bucks, but you could have got it with pre-order. Sometimes they throw this in for a little bit cheaper, um, but the S Pen itself, is specifically designed for the Galaxy Z Fold. It does say Samsung, and they have many S Pens. They have like a pro version. They have the S Pen for the S24 Ultra, which is smaller than this. Then they have a larger one for the tablet, but only use the one design for the Z Fold or you can damage the screen. But what I really like about the S Pen here on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6 here is that this phone right here has more room to write. So let's say I'm writing my script. Let's talk about the display, the software, and then see, because this canvas is larger, if I go ahead and split this, I can say other points, other points to talk about. So let's talk about battery, right? And let's talk about the camera. So what I really love is the canvas is so much larger. So not only for coloring and drawing, if you wanna do pen up community over here, sketching to image with the new AI features, the canvas is just much larger. So it's just way more enjoyable to use the S Pen on here, I think, than any other Samsung phone before. It's closer to a tablet-like experience while still being able to turn this back into a smaller phone. Now, yes, I do like that. I don't like that they don't allow you to do it on the front screen, but it's not an end-all be-all. It's not a deal breaker because why would I want to use the S Pen on this screen anyway? It's so small, it'd be very cramped. Should they allow it? Probably, because Samsung's known for basically giving you all the features in the kitchen sink, but I still wouldn't use it often. I would always pretty much go in here anyway. So yeah, the S Pen, just a massively useful tool, especially on this phone. This is way more useful to me than any other Note or S line phone before when it comes to S Pen. Another area where Samsung really shows its 
really nice foldable experience is in the hinge. So I've come to love this phone for the hinge. Now I've tried multiple other smartphones out there and the hinges, while a lot of competitors are making tough hinges, don't get it twisted. Samsung's hinge just feels a little bit more durable. It has like a more satisfying spine in there. That's the best way I could put it. It just feels like they've been refining it over the year. And you could definitely feel like if you go touch a Z Fold from like years ago and then you open this one up, it just has a more solid feel. Now, the Galaxy almost dropped it. Now, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 also had a really nice hinge. So it's not massively different from that one. But it just feels solid and it stays pretty durable. You can just feel it when it closes. It's a feel thing. So you have to go to the store, check it out, and just feel the closing. Uh, similar on the Z Flip 6, they're also improving that hinge. So I just love the hinge. It's not something that really is a big feature point, but it definitely does feel like the mechanism is more matured, more polished. It just feels like the structure has been improving in durability. And it just kind of reassures you that for the price you're paying, you got a durable product. It feels like a durable product due to that hinge structure. So the next one is the really bright and beautiful display here. And it's not washed out. It is like perfectly tuned. This is probably the best Samsung display besides the S24 Ultra that I've seen this year. And some people didn't like the S24 line because of their anti-glare properties, made it a little bit less vibrant. But the Galaxy Z Fold 6, when you pinch in, you could see definitely cuts off a massive amount of content. So I don't typically watch content in this format. The foldables still give you the black bars. Turn it this way and you could see you get a little bit more space. But overall, just a beautiful display right there. Look at the contrast ratio. It's gorgeous. So let me go ahead and head up out of here and talk about some other aspects of this display. It also gets incredibly bright, the brightest we've seen on a Z Fold yet. Also, if we go outside, the adaptive brightness really adapts well, and I could see this whether I'm on the cover display or the inner display. I also like that if you go into display settings, that you have the ability to turn on and off the 120 hertz. You have screen modes to go with Vivid. I actually should have had that in Vivid while we were showcasing that example. Let's go ahead and look at that again. And you could see looks just phenomenal. You can see the color reproduction is stunning. Very good colors and nothing is really like oversaturated or undersaturated. And it still has that pop that you're used to from Samsung without being too colorful. So this is my favorite Samsung display on a phone that I've used this year in terms of giving you that Samsung vivid feel. It really does have it here. In screen mode settings, you can go to the advanced settings and you'll see vividness, different RGB settings, but also scroll down here and you'll find the usability factor is amazing too. You can continue apps on the cover screen. If you would like, you can choose which ones to do it or you can just select all the apps. So when you're using the applications on the inner display, flip it over to cover, it kind of just goes with it. Now I have that turned off because I like to keep the phone and tablet experience separated, but if you want that, you can use it. They also have accidental touch protection and more. One thing I don't really love though, is I think it needs a little bit sharper pixels per inch. I think that the competition has sharper displays, like when we're talking about technical pixels on the panel. So Samsung can improve there, give us a little bit higher pixels per inch. I think the OnePlus Open has got a tack sharper display than this one. Um, so I would appreciate if Samsung would improve the sharpness. Uh, but overall, the color reproduction, the all that stuff is just top notch. Over here on the front panel, surprisingly, even though this is not like the main experience of the phone, this is kind of just a secondary panel, the cover screen. This is also a really good panel as well. It also is very vivid, very Samsung-like. And either way you look at it, whether you're on this cover screen or the inner display, you're getting that top notch, vivid Samsung experience on here without being undersaturated, oversaturated, or being like washed out. So they nailed it, man. The experience here front and on the inside, absolutely phenomenal. I've been really enjoying my experience here with these OLED panels. So the next reason I love this phone is all these different flex and tent modes. The ability to use this like this, this infinite angle hinge right here. And let me tell you, this reminds me a lot of the Microsoft Surface laptop, how you can just kind of put this thing in pretty much infinite angles here. And the hinge is so solid, you could bring this thing down like this and it just doesn't fall closed. This is where I'm talking about the hinge being better than the competitors. It has like infinite angles on the hinges. No matter where you're at, 
It's just amazing because you can basically put it in any way you want. Then you can also use this outer panel. Like let's say you start over here. Let's go ahead and make sure auto rotate is on. Let's go ahead and turn it in the sideways mode. And yes, they even have a landscape mode on the front panel. Not super useful, but sometimes you might want to prop that up like that and go ahead and use this phone on the bed or in little tight spaces or, you know, a little bit privacy when you're at the coffee shop, whatever, you know, look at this. You can use this in this format as well. This also plays into effect when you're using the camera when you want to take selfies and stuff. So let's go ahead and flip the selfie around, bring this up and take a look at that. See, you got your own stand. You don't even need a tripod here. In addition, you could prop it up like this and you'll still be able to get a pretty good selfie in that format as well. You can use that front facing camera to get the camera or if you're taking photos of something on the rear, you can use this. Let's use this right here. It's gonna be my Z Flip 6, hold on. We'll flip this around and you can use it like that and you could separate the two angles there. Not only that, if you're watching a YouTube video, your comments will appear down here, content up here, or if you're typing out a message, keyboard down here and stuff up there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Galaxy Store and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the keyboard. So the keyboard pops up down there like a little laptop. Now typing two hands, not really, but you could still use your thumbs and it kind of feels like a little laptop-y like experience on this product. So the infinite ways and versatility of the, text and the, the tent and flex modes has made this thing something I love to use. It really is versatile and useful, it really is. I might get some slack for this, but the cameras. I actually really think the cameras are pretty enjoyable on this phone, especially the ones that use the selfies, the rear cameras for selfie. But it has a good amount of zoom, and while you go past three, you go 10, 20, 20 and 30 are pretty bad on this phone, so I don't even use those much, but they're there if you wanna mess around with some digital zoom. Um, the camera photos, they come out very good for the average person who's just needing some good quality photos and good quality videos. You can also do 8K on here as well. You're not going 8K 60, but you can go 8K 30. So the video is pretty solid as well. This is kind of like an S24 base model camera. It's pretty similar to that. If we go over here to the more modes, you have food modes, portrait modes, dual record, single take pro. You even have expert raw mode, even though this is not really a pro level camera. On here, you can still do some pro level stuff. And of course, all the Samsung stuff is there as well. But the selfies, man, when you're using that rear camera, wow, they just blow away the competition, mostly because you're using rear cameras. But the fact that you can frame yourself is pretty dope. Uh, you can do even you can even do something similar to this on the Galaxy Z Flip as well, uh, but not quite the same. But the Z Flip is a great camera for selfies as well. But Definitely this one is pretty, pretty awesome here uh, to use the rear cameras to do all of this video recording, photo recording. It's it's really a, quite a great experience. It's one of the reasons I come to love using this device as well. The next reason is because of Samsung's efforts to make this lighter and more portable is really paying off, I feel like. While this is not even close to the most thinnest phone out there, um, even Samsung knows that. There's rumors they're gonna make a slim foldable a version of this, and I think they're gonna get slimmer in the future. They're still making efforts to make it smaller. The original folds were much thicker and larger than this, and uh, overall, it just feels about as heavy as your standard flagship phone. Long story short, I love the, the fact that this phone is getting lighter every year, because now it's getting more usable. When you add a case, it does become a little bit heavy, but if you get one of these thinner Samsung slim cases, it doesn't have too much bulk. And I do recommend if you're gonna get a case, get one of the Samsung officials because a lot of those third party, unless you're using a really reputable third party case brand, a lot of those cheaper ones are just trash for this phone. So definitely get either a really reputable case manufacturer or Samsung for the case uh, because a lot of them are not good, especially on foldables because of all the different ways they have to attach the case to these products. But this phone just feels, while it feels thicker than, a, still thicker than a regular phone, it just feels not that hard to manage daily. It's just usable now daily. Some people think it's a debate product for testers and people. No, this is definitely consumer ready. You can use this daily without any major issues. Is it gonna be a little bit thicker than your average? Yeah, is it a big issue? Not really. It's definitely pretty uh, portable and usable.
So I've also been loving the fast wireless charging as well as the USB-C, the SIM card tray, which you can use over here. I wish they still had expandable memory. It's funny because when you pull out the SIM card tray, you can actually still see the area where they could have put SD card storage, but it's fine. This just has all the juicy connectivity and fast charging, reverse wireless charging, stuff that you need on a phone, further giving you pretty much what you expect from the device, although no charger in the box, so you will need to get your own fast charger if you don't have one already, which you probably do. Some people have argued that the battery life is trash on this phone. I totally disagree. The battery has adapted to my usage and it's figuring out how I use the phone and I'm getting easily a full day on a full charge with this phone and then some. I go a little bit more. Um, definitely not draining nearly as fast as some people would make it out to be. At first it does drain a little fast. Once it learns your usage patterns though, it starts getting better and it's uh, it's pretty usable. Is it the best battery phone out there? Absolutely not. I found the D1 Plus 12 to last longer than this. Um, I found some other products to last longer than this. So this is definitely not the longest battery phone out there, but it's not even close to trash or bad. It's definitely a full day use, and that's a full day of medium to even heavy use. So I, I think the battery is even much better on here too than the Z Flip 6. So I'm not, I'm not a, this is not a problem. This is a usable all day phone. Oh, for sure. Another reason I really, really love using this phone lately is the separation between the cover display and the inner display. Now, I like how I have my basic phone set up. If you're wondering why all my icons are so minimalistic, it's because I deal with a lot of phones, so I'm not trying to be overwhelmed with a million apps on each phone. So I keep it pretty simple, minimal, and folder and organized. But you can see this is my phone screen set up and it has a different wallpaper. It has different app locations. When I open this up, here's my tablet set up. You can see a different dock, different wallpapers. It's literally like opening up into a different world. You're going from a phone on the front to a tablet inside. Now, I know a lot of foldables claim to be the hybrid masters, um, but truly, I think Samsung's the hybrid master because most of those phones just carry over the front screen into the inner panel, whereas Samsung's phone allows you to make it your own experience on the inner panel and then a phone on the outside, different app layout, different wallpaper. Other manufacturers need to take note because I really like how this is a tablet on the inside and then it changes back to your phone setup on the outside. It truly is a hybrid here. Literally feels like you have two phones in one. It's, it's pretty dope. That's one of the reasons I've come to love this and phone. The next one is the Galaxy ecosystem. If you're using Galaxy Buds, you're using the Samsung Galaxy Book, which I do have. I have a Galaxy Book. I also have a Samsung tablet and I have the Buds. I don't really have the latest watch. I think I have the watch before the latest one came out, but just the overall ecosystem is really, really good, especially if you're the type of person who likes to do everything on one platform. This is a great competitor to the Apple ecosystem for sure. While it's not quite as good and because uh, it uses different software OSs, everything does work pretty well together. And it's one of the most competitive out there. So I talked a lot about multitasking in my full review, so I'm not gonna go there too much. I do love that, but that's been on pretty much Samsung phones forever. This one does have the ability to split three different apps. So my next reason is actually the fingerprint sensor. I do love the hardware placement of it. I think it's in the perfect location and I do love the usage of it. I think it's more reliable to use than even a in display. And I'm not saying Samsung won't go there, but like if I wrap my left hand, I could just put my index finger there and boom, I'm right in. If I'm in my right hand, I come over here and I'm right in. So I just really like this hardware based fingerprint sensor. You don't see that on a lot of phones and it's pretty useful. It really quite is. So let's wrap it up with productivity. There's just not a lot of phones out there that are more productive than this device right here. I found that I can use this as a phone throughout the day when I'm out and about and keep it pretty portable and not have this huge screen, people being all up in my business. But when I get home and I wanna be into my productivity experience, I have that here as well. I also do have the ability to, again, split the applications over here. Uh, I can still do pop view as well. And you can make these icons smaller to get a little bit more of a canvas space. The efficiency of this product is definitely just a little bit higher than a base slab smartphone, just because you can split apps, you can write on one side, watch a video on another side, take a course on one side, take your notes on the other side. It's just really good and it's a game changer for juggling daily 
uh, applications, especially if you're juggling a lot of applications. You know, you're doing your schoolwork and you're running different folders and different classes and courses and you need notes here and you need this over here so you can watch it. It's just a really, really a game changing phone for productivity. There's just nothing like it out there. Um, there is some foldables that are competing very well and can do most of it, but they don't have this, the S Pen. And that changes the game a little bit as well. So wrapping it up, this was a why I love the Z Fold. So if you're looking for criticisms, you're at the wrong video. I will talk about criticisms um, in my full, re I did talk about them in my full review. So you can go look at that video if you want to see some more critiques that I did make on this phone. But generally, it's a pretty good product here. It has a faster chip with the Snapdragon. You notice I didn't talk about that too much. The more squared canvas makes the multitasking and S Pen experience better. And the under display camera is nice because it's pretty much invisible. The camera does pick it up, but in reality, you don't see it that much. So it feels like one of the only foldables out there with a full all screen. Um, Samsung could definitely work on that crease. You've seen that right there. That's still pretty visible in certain scenarios and you definitely can feel it when swiping through it. And people say you forget about the crease. I never forget about the crease because when I'm swiping through websites or going left to right, my finger feels it and it reminds me that it's there. So I never really forget about it, but does it bother me too much? No. Does it, does it stop bothering me after a while? Yes, it does stop bothering me, but I still know it's there. So I would, I would like to further see improvements there. But virtually, this thing is uh, seeming like it's reaching peak Galaxy Fold for this particular form factor. I do know what they can do, though. They can make this phone a little bit taller, so it can be a bigger screen, and which would make that inner display larger. So if they made this a little bit taller, like up to here, that would give you like an 8.2 inch inner display while still keeping this narrow and usable outer panel. They can also expand it this way, which will make the inner display also larger. Um, so like if they went a little bit wider, like kind of like out to there. So just a little bit like this way, they can make that a much wider inner panel as well. But that's going to make it a little bit less ergonomic on the inside. So for this form factor, I think they're pretty much at the peak of what they can do. They can improve the cameras drastically uh, to make them pro level. And of course, they can always put a bigger battery, but I might add some more weight to the product. Overall, <laughs> I've been really just loving it. It's you can see. I'm trying to nitpick and find problems with it because there's not many for what this is. Pretty cool. Even though people still are not on board with paying the price of a foldable, there's no arguing that it's a pretty useful and pretty well polished and usable product now. So that's why I love the Z Fold 6 and why it's became my daily driver Android phone as of right now, as of September 2024. Remember, I use iPhone as my main and I have a main SIM in my Android as well. I have two separate devices. I used to always switch, but lately I've just been using both of them. So thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about the Z Fold 6, you're looking to buy one, you can further your research by checking out my other video right here, which is the Z Fold Honest Review. And uh, have a great day. I'll catch you on the next episode. Nick here. Thank you for watching the more Nick Ackerman channel. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.